Hello and welcome to my channel. This is the Car Show Enthusiast. Today we're going to talk about a Painos Esperante GTLM. This is a very rare automobile and it's manufactured in the United States. It gets a lot of attention in car shows, so I thought we'd take a closer look at it. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. I'd love to have you be a regular member of my channel. Thanks. Well, if you haven't figured it out already, the Painos that we're going to look at is mine. When I discovered the Painos brand on the internet, I went out and looked for used vehicles I could get. They weren't manufacturing the Painos Esperante at the time I was interested in buying the car. So I went around the internet and did find a singular used copy of the car out in Illinois. So I contacted a specialty dealer out near Chicago and also called Midwest Car Exchange. And I flew out and after them letting me inspect the vehicle, I was able to purchase it. One of the best times I had was actually driving my new sports car home. When I got back toward Nebraska, toward my home state of Colorado, I decided to open up the car a bit. And as you can see in this picture, I did just about 100 miles an hour. But what was pretty interesting was that the car was turning less than 3,000 RPM. I was pretty impressed with a six-speed transmission. You can still purchase Painos automobiles these days. Here's a picture of their website. The vehicles in the picture are also Painos Esperantes, but this isn't the coupe. This is the GTR1 racing vehicle. They race these at Le Mans, as far as I know, and the green vehicle on the right is homogulated. That means it's street legal. Several years ago, there was a rule that if you were going to race a car at Le Mans, you also had to have a street legal version of the vehicle. I do not know if that is still a requirement, but if you have quite a bit of money, you can convince Painos to make you a homogulated GTR1 that you can drive around town. I think the price for having one of those is upwards of a million dollars. The Esperante is actually a racing vehicle, not just the GTR1. And as you can see here, they also race the Esperante at Le Mans. They're very proud of their racing heritage. Here's the racing team. And what I drive is in fact the street legal version of their race car. An interesting note was that Pano stopped making the Esperante in about 2006. And my understanding was the United States changed their airbag laws. You couldn't get the two-speed airbags that were required by U.S. law for the smaller automobile manufacturers such as Pano's. So they weren't able to manufacture a car after 2006 and so they started to make what I call the Batmobile. This is the Painos Abruzzi. It was made for celebration of Le Mans and they were only going to make 81 of them in celebration of the 81 years of Le Mans racing. I do not know if they actually manufactured 81 of them, how many were made, who bought them and so forth, but that's what they did after making the Esperante. On to my particular vehicle, the one that I purchased used has a Ford power plant. This one has the SVT, four valves per cylinder, 4.6 liter V8 supercharged engine. You can see the UAW placard right there on the motor. It's been a rock solid engine for me. It doesn't drip, it doesn't leak, it doesn't cause any problems. The supercharger has not been problematic whatsoever. It's been a great engine to have in a car. One of the side effects of putting different power plants into the engine bay is that you don't have room for a battery. So what you're looking at are the battery terminals that stick out of the side of the engine bay right into the carbon fiber area. The battery is actually stored in a compartment ahead of the passenger in the vehicle behind the passenger front wheel. So there's a little bay in there where they put the battery in. If you need to jump start the battery 
or in my case I put a battery tender on the car when I'm not using it you attach the maintenance terminals here to charge the battery. One of the interesting features that's very popular at a car show is the fact that at the time the Panos was made, the one I have in 2004, the factory workers signed stainless steel plates and put it on the front of the car. The people that made, manufactured the car and designed it signed the plates. The manufacturer also named the vehicle. As you can see here, my car is named Leslie. I didn't pick that name, it was named at the factory. And apparently they know it. If you call up Pinos and say, I own Leslie, then they will know that that's a Chili Pepper Red GTLM convertible. Here's a close-up of the manufacturer's signatures. And if you look just about dead center or dead center, dead center high, Don Pino's signature is there on the left plate. The interior of the car looks like this, one of the nicer design features of the vehicle is that the dash cluster is in the center of the car. There's nothing in front of the driver. This is a standard racing configuration, so you're not distracted with the gauges and you can see right in front of you. One of the nice things about the dash cluster is in fact that you, that you can see all the gauges. I thought it would be distracting, but if you notice, if you have your dash cluster right in front of you, you have to look through the steering wheel and you may not be able to see every gauge at any time and you certainly can in this design for the car. The passenger side has an airbag of course, it's a very very safe vehicle and that little silver quarter sized hole on the dashboard is a tiny air vent meant to direct defrosted air over the passenger side glass so you can see the side view mirror. If you look right to the right of the word Esperante on the carbon fiber dash, there's a triangular hole and that's the air conditioning vent. There are two directional air conditioning vents dead center in the console, but the one for the passenger is actually molded into the dashboard and it comes out that way. One of the nice features is that the entire upper structure of the car is carbon fiber. This is not an applique, it's not contact paper, it's an extruded aluminum frame and the entire upper part of the car is carbon fiber. You can see in the picture that there's an aluminum skin that's bolted for painting, but the entire vehicle is carbon fiber other than the frame. For aerodynamic purposes, they also did a Ferrari or Maserati-like treatment of the headlights, which is pretty nice. I'm just glad I haven't had to replace a headlamp yet. I don't want to see the bill for taking that structure off to get to the headlights for a replacement. One of the first things I did when I bought the car was take a picture of it. As soon as I got home, I washed the car and drove it over to the Pikes Peaks Visitor Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado. If you get up early, right at 8 a.m. on a summer day, the lighting's just great to take a picture of a vehicle. Driving through Garden of the Gods Park. It is a cloudy day, but it is beautiful here nonetheless. And we seem to have a hiker that is holding up the works. One of the nice things about having a Panos is that it has. American parts and sub-assemblies. It has a Ford engine, my example does anyway, and a Tremec transmission, and a lot of things that are sourced within the U.S. So having it serviced isn't a terribly big deal. One of the things you do have to be careful though, is not to have a rogue mechanic or someone that doesn't really know what they're doing working on your car. I have had 
cosmetic damage done to my car. I had a place that did my imports, meaning Toyota, and had them do reasonably good work on changing oil and shocks and adjusting suspension and things like that. And I made the mistake of taking my Panos in to having the shifter looked at. It was a little loose, not the transmission part, but the custom shifter part with Panos. They called Panos several times, got the right parts and so forth. However, the mechanic that they got to work on it was not a very careful person and uh, cracked my center carbon fiber console while putting it back in. The shifter was improved, but I don't know whether he was under a time crunch or whether he was just a bad mechanic, but he made some cracks in the console I didn't notice for a couple of weeks because they, unless the light is just right and you're sitting in the passenger seat or you turn your head, you don't really see them and he damaged the console. And since I didn't see it right away, it would be hard to blame the shop. I know they did it. I went to them and showed them the damage that was done. Um, I think they were relieved I didn't or couldn't go after them in court, but I told them that I pay my bills on time and I've brought you a lot of automobiles to be fixed and maintained and you're losing my business for good. Uh, the upshot was that the mechanic that actually did the work and damaged the car was fired and he should have been. I subsequently spent quite a bit of money, called Pano's, got a replacement console, spent a lot of money on labor at a new shop to try to put in a replacement and lo and behold Panos had changed the way they make the console out of carbon fiber. Each model year was the same, but the way they manufactured the carbon fiber had changed and the new console from a modern year Panos Esperante didn't fit exactly to a 2004. And as a result, I spent a good chunk of money on labor to just end up sending the console back and they very generously took it back but I didn't recover the funds on the labor of course to try to get it to fit so what I will likely do and a trip I look forward to is to actually drive this car to the Panos factory in Hoshton, Georgia and leave it with them for a week and have them do some cosmetic work I'd like done to the car. It is, you know, at least a decade old, more, and the car could use a refresh. I'd like to have the front bumper replaced. It's got some road rash, as all cars do, that are driven. And I'd like to have the carpet replaced and the leathers replaced, meaning new seats. Uh, and a new shifter boot because the shifter boot's been damaged by the improperly installed console. It's cut a little bit into the leather, not bad, but it's enough to notice, at least I notice it. So someday, perhaps, I will be able to drive the car back to Pano's and have them do a refresh on the vehicle. Mechanically, it's fine. I could use some shifter work, but it's been marvelous in that regard. The funny story uh, was that this car was a demonstrator for the company and was built in 2004, but was not sold to a private party until 2007. And that being the case, the car was apparently showed to a lot of dealerships and a lot of people hoping to make sure they knew how to repair the car and make them familiar with the brand. And what I think happened is that everybody, including salespeople, that test drove the car played Johnny Speed Racer 
and they really beat the crap out of the transmission shifter, the shifter itself. So that's why I've had the shifter rebuilt at least once. I have found a local speed shop, a racing garage that agreed to take the car and hopefully they'll be able to fix a lot of the mechanical issues, mainly the shifter that I want looked at and maybe replace the battery for me. But I'm hoping that, I'm very hopeful that a speed shop will be able to work on the car and be far more careful than the mechanic. I've learned my lesson. I will never take my Panos to a local guy that, that does just oil changes and shocks. And make sure that you're, you inquire as to the quality and thoroughness of the mechanic themselves. But overall, the car's been marvelous. It's mechanically sound, very reliable. I've been very happy with it. Gets a lot of attention at car shows and can be fixed locally. And you're not paying $5,000 for an oil change like you might on a Maserati or a Ferrari. Overall, I'm very pleased with it. And if you can find one on the used market, I highly suggest you take a look at getting one. They are a marvelous car to have and to drive. I am, I rarely take the car off road, but I think I'll pull in here and enjoy the sights. I appreciate you watching my video. If you like it, please subscribe, please hit the like bell, and I hope to make a lot more videos on a lot more cars. I find them interesting and look forward to having you back as a member.